Right, so today we're going to be building a, a lean shelter, a lean to shelter. Uh, yeah, I found a decent set of trees. The wind's coming from me from that direction behind me, so it's perfect. It's a shelter, it'll be sheltering me from the wind. So um, it's a correct distance apart, so when I lie down, perfect. So I get to say, I get to clearing this camp up now. This camp and I get collecting blocks. I won't be cutting any logs for this, uh, this build today because the loggers have been in and they've already done it for me. <laughs> they've all stacked them all nice. So the only destruction I'm doing today is actually destroying their piles of lovelessly stacked logs. <laughs> Which to be fair, I don't think they're going to do anything with anyway because um, at the top end of the forest I've seen the piles that they've done and they've left and they've just rotted so they're not doing anything with them so why do they even pile them up like that I don't know. But, um, I'm going to utilise them anyway so I'm not just causing any more destruction to this forest. I'm literally just using what they've already done. And I'm going to build me nice lean-to shelter. So I get to clearing this camp up now, this area, and I'll start lugging in the logs to build it. I'm going to use no cordage today. So if you're out at sticks and you've got no cordage or nothing like that, you can build this lean-to shelter. You've all seen them, they've all done them, there's loads of them. You know, loads of people have done them before. Well, this one's going to get done without cordage. Alright? I'll get to work. Lent up, lent up two big poles, the biggest I can find, because they have a wider surface area here at the top. And I've got probably one of the thinnest, not not too thin, it can take my weight, from 14 stone. Ridge pole for the top. It's only leaning on it anyway, the biggest stress will be in the centre. And you just see me hanging from it, it can take me 14 stone. And just not just 14 stone that hanging dead. I was, I was pulling and pulling on it, you know what I mean? So it can take me plenty of weight there. So like I said, there's two poles at the side, and this sits on it. This is a better angle. You can see what I've done. I've lent these poles, biggest I can find, up against a tree, and I've lent this, because it creates a bigger surface area here, to wedge this pole into this gap between the tree and that. Okay? And the same on the other side. The less weight on that bridge pole, the better. Even though it could take 14 stones a mile here, laddy ass. The more weight you put on the bridge pole, the more it pushes down against this tree, against these poles where you put the V down there, sits it in the V, the stronger it gets. So the gravity is doing the job for you. So as long as these big these main posts, the sat on were well secure. And you saw that, I tested it by bouncing on it. So as you can see, I'm not actually cutting no trees down today. In a survival situation, you've got to do what you've got to do. But I'm not in a survival situation today, I'm just piss assing about. <laughs> so I'm going to utilise what they've already done. The only damage I'm doing here is wrecking their piles. Well, they're wrecking the forest, so what? Did on I've wrecked their piles. So yeah, so. I'm just utilising their stock, uh, stock piles, so they'll have to recollect them again. They should be cutting forest down, should they? I'm a bit of a tree hugger myself. <laughs>
There's piles of them. This is what I'm going to use. There you have it, some sort of a rudimentary shelter I can get under. Not a minute too soon, it's starting to spit, raining a little bit, light rain. Start with your thick ends on the edges, work your way in to about here. That way then, start with your thin ends at the top again. And what happens is, as it starts to do that, you start to do that. If it starts to do that, you start to do that a little bit, so it fans out at the top. By the time it gets to the other side, they even themselves up. Plus, the, reason, the good reason for doing that is, in the centre here is the weakest point of the ridge pole. So you want your lightest load in the centre. Doesn't matter about the edges, <coughs> you've got a short span, and it's held up by a tree and a big post. So it can take a lot of weight at these edges. Even this, though this is thin, it can take a lot of weight. But in the centre here, there's no centre pillar holding it up. So it can't take a hell of a lot of weight, even though it took me at 14 stone bouncing up and down on it. Always better, because now I'm going to start loading that with shit on the other side to make it waterproof. And that'll then add to the weight. So as you can see here now, you start covering the bottom, start with the bottom first, sphagnum moss. It's so mainly, the bits you want to cover is up to about here. It doesn't really matter about the top, because your bedding is along this section here. This is where you're going to be sleeping, so the main area of waterproof covering is up to about halfway, probably just beyond halfway. So, like said, this is how you do it. You grab the sphagnum moss off the floor, roll it in a carpet, and then roll it back out onto the wood. Collect loads of that as much as you can. And then on top of that, spruce branches or anything, any shite you can collect. Chuck it on. The rain hits it, more chance of running off. That's what you want. That's why it's at such a steep angle. The rain lets it and run off rather than dripping down onto you. So, I'll get on and finish this off, and then we'll get on to the next bit. Right, <coughs> right. I've got my shelter, and as you can see it's fully covered now. All the way around waterproofed, as best as I could do it, with the materials I had at hand. But it'll do for, for the rain, so we can absolutely piss down there if it wants, and I'll be nice and dry. You can actually block the sides off, stop the wind coming down from this side, so it's an enclosed area. The more you do to your camp, the more comfortable you're going to be. Um, but how long do you want to spend on it, you know? I'm going to get about now, building a bed for it. Now, like I said, in a survival situation, you've seen them on that fake grills, fucking survival desert island or whatever it is. They all sit around the campfire, that's when they've got a camp, a fire going. They all sit around the campfire, thinking about home and about food and all the rest of it. All they're doing is making themselves more depressed. In a survival situation, keep yourself occupied. By keeping yourself occupied, you're actually improving your situation and not, it's a mind game, and not cabbage in your head, depressing yourself and your mind's elsewhere, not thinking about the situation that you're actually in. So yeah, keep yourself occupied in a survival situation. It's, it's the rule of threes. Three minutes without air, well, I've got plenty of air, I'm not underwater, I'm not kayaking today, so I've got plenty of air, so no, no problems worrying about that. It's three hours without shelter. Well, this took me about an hour and a half. You know what I mean? And I didn't have anything. You know? And I'd have needed a saw or something, obviously. I could have used fallen timber, broken up on trees. It took me a hell of a lot longer. I was lucky enough, I'm coming here from a logged area. And they've already cut some to right size. Thank you. <laughs> You've got three days without water. I'll have a stream down there so I don't have to worry about water. And three weeks without food. Just seen three or four deer wandering past, so there's, there's food about. As soon as you smell me, wind's coming from behind me, that's why I built my shelter th this side. So the wind's coming from behind me, I'm sheltered from it. But they're on the bank right behind you now. And uh, I was watching them, I'd seen them, they hadn't seen me, but they got a smell of me, obviously, because my sensor had drifted over by then, but it's time to come along it. And they didn't see me, but they legged it, seen them running, so you know what I mean? 
there is food available in, these, in this forest. So I've got three weeks to fathom some way out of catching it. You know, building some snares, some traps, whatever. So it's rule of threes. Three minutes without her. Three hours without shelter. Well, today I can last a hell of a lot longer than three hours without shelter. But it's not pissing down with rain. There's a, there's a lot of wind about, but there's no rain. So I'd last a lot longer than three hours. But, you know, if it's pissing down with rain, and it's windy, you're going to get wet through. The wind chill factor, you're not going to last long. So it's three hours without, without shelter. Three days without water. Like I said, there's a stream down there, I've got plenty of water. And three weeks without food. So three weeks. I'll probably have been rescued by then. So don't sit around the campfire dwelling on my wife at home. Is she worried about me and all this stuff? Keep your mind busy. Build your camp. Make your situation better for yourself. I'll get on with building bed. Two on the outside, we only need one dead centre. Sharpen them off like that so they're going to the ground easier. Get them, just hammer them in. Now the ground I'm working on here is on a slight decline. It's got a hill that rolls that way. Obviously this is my head end. You don't sleep with your head at the bottom of your, you know, your feet raised higher up. So this is my head end. But it's, it's going to have a tendency to roll that way. So two pegs on that side and your one on this side it's not going to roll uphill but it stops it from twisting if you was to put your one centered and your two on this side the log would do that so it's more tending to roll downhill obviously it won't roll uphill so you know it can't twist on you at night this is my bed built i need to peg it here now there and there to stop this last log rolling off in the middle of the night and me ending up on the on the wet ground this will keep me off I don't have a roll mat so obviously I keep this one under my ass all the time you know that so I'm gonna have to go and collect some spruce branches to, to line it to keep me up off the wet logs up off the wet ground and insulate me oh can I graph that well like I said Every little bit you do makes your life a little bit more luxurious and keeps your head occupied, keeps your mind occupied from thinking about home and your bed and all that other crap you think about in a survival situation, your tea, your loved ones. Keep yourself occupied. Like I say, the more you do, the more you keep your mind occupied, the less you dwell on shit. And that's the worst bit, keep your head away from all that dwelling on shit about your situation. Anyway, I've had a few minutes to catch my breath back now after lugging all these heavy logs from Orient Forest. In a normal situation, I'd take the logs, the trees, from close by. I've had to walk all the way around to collect these. So I'm a little bit out of breath. Less trees to drop on you in the middle of the night then, isn't there? You're not carrying them as far, like I've just had to do. So yeah. I get on collecting some uh, some spruce sprigs or whatever they call them then to line this, keep your off it. And then, uh, oh yeah, I've kept because I'm on a slight incline. I've kept these logs short on this side. Don't matter how long they're that side because I'm on a slight incline, incline like that. So any rain that comes from this side is not going to hit these logs and then run down under my bed and under me. It doesn't matter if you hit that side because I'll run that way anyway and run off. But I just don't want to run in this side. And obviously, the longer you're here and the longer you're in this situation, you can close these ends off, like I said. It'd be even better then, it's being an enclosed camp then, won't it? So there you have it. There's your shed, there's your bed, there's your shelter. Lie down quite comfortably on that, I'll show you. Oh. There you go. Oh. I've just got sleep now. <laughs> oh. I'll just lie here for a bit. 
Like I say, I need loads more of these, uh, whatever the uh, spruce sprigs or whatever they call them. I need loads more. A lot thicker. The more you put on, the better you are going to be. fire raises the morale on it. Get a brew on. Oh, it's the target the brew on that. I don't burn my fingers. I've got my gloves. I decided to put my own music in. YouTube keeps uh, flagging mine for copyright issues because I'm using other people's songs. So I'm going to make my own up. Haha, <laughs> let's see if they flag that one. <laughs> oh, that's my water boiling away nicely. And a good old tea bag. I think I'm going to need the gloves for this. It's going to be hot. Oh yeah. Going to be one hot brew. One hot mama. Got a bad cow. A bit of cow. Oh, just chuck more of that off the floor. No good in a survival situation, is it? Chucking it off the floor. I won't put that away just yet. I need that. Oh, yeah. Boiling nicely. That tea bag out now, you've done your job. Chucking fire, get rid of it. Ooh. You could only taste this, but you're not going to do because I'm going to do. Okay, <laughs> Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be. The future's not ours to see. Okay, Sarah, Sarah, what will be, will be. Okay, Sarah, Sarah. Could have been a singer, me, you know. If it were for my voice. <laughs> now, YouTube have been flagging all my videos for uh, copyright issues for songs. So, uh, so let's see if they flag that one. Canteen Cup Saturday. <laughs> oh, that's warm, that. It's hitting the spot. Oh yeah, lovely.
proper morale booster, cup of tea. So if you've enjoyed this video, you know the drill by now. Like it, share it, subscribe it, all that good stuff. You know the drill by now. Just gonna have to keep reminding you about this. <laughs> but yeah, so lovely morale boosting fire. So thanks for joining me. I'll catch you on the next one. Take care now, you're awesome. Stay awesome. <laughs>